join the team. Hey team, this is McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Everything Epic Rambo. This is the Trilogy Edition. This is from their Kickstarter, Rambo the Board Game. This is going to be so cool. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to break this up into two videos, I believe, because as you can see, this is a pretty massive amount of content, and I will say there has been a number of things that were changed, uh, improved along the way through the Kickstarter, and with the final production value of this game. You will find the original prototype and how to play on this channel as well if you're interested in that, but we're going to get right into unboxing this. This is going to be video number one, and then video number two, which I'll do probably a month or two out, which is going to be the gameplay of Rambo the board game, and that's when we'll get into the actual uh, gameplay that we have. Now, if you want to do some compare and contrasts, from what was originally there with the prototype. You can do that if you want because the video is obviously on the channel because this is the final game and this is what you got, uh, which I'm really excited to get into. So let's just go ahead and as you can see, it's completely in the shrink. I've not opened this at all. I wanted that to be sort of a surprise there on camera, exactly sort of what I'm seeing and getting into. And it looks like this is actually two boxes. Uh, if you remember from the Kickstarter, if you did back this, there was a base game, and then there was something called Rambo, the board game First Blood. So it looks like those boxes are separate. Then there's some form of a sleeve that they have uh, over it all. And it is heavy. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how much it weighs, but it probably weighs at least, I mean, that's at least 12, 15 pounds maybe. Um, it's, quite a bit of, it's quite a bit of game. So let's get that out of the way. Now, we will get and see, is it a full sleeve? Yes, it is. So it's a full sleeve. You want to be careful with that if that's something you want to retain, um, which I would recommend doing because it kind of holds both of the games together. So this is the actual board game box. You can see there on the front the awesome artwork. You know, what a fantastic IP they, they picked up here with this one, uh, and they nailed it all the way. I mean, it's directly based on and from the movies. You can see all the characters and the artwork. It's done... So cool, and I think a lot of people probably backed this just simply because of that fact of how how well they did the IP with this board game. You can see there on the back, it's got some pictures of the miniatures, and there's a lot of cool Kickstarter stuff that um, ended up coming with this as well. So we're going to set that right there, and then here's the second one, which is First Blood, and then I'm going to set this, bear if you hold that, I'm going to set this right down there, and then um, here is Rambo the board game First Blood, which this one feels like extremely light um, because it's going to have sort of that First Blood content in it. Uh, it. They did go with the same size of, of box, so we'll see here. Actually, let's go ahead and open the First Blood first. Uh, and you see there on the front some awesome artwork from the movies. And then on the back, I'll show that as well. Um, you can see some of the miniatures and some of the things you're going to get there with First Blood. I will hit the... Um, this is First Blood is a one player uh 90 minutes ages 14 plus okay so kind of a um somewhat of a solo setup on this one or a solo part of the game and then you'll see here on the main game it's one to four players so you can solo this as well uh 90 minutes ages 14 plus so the the first blood is really designed to be more of a um, a solo addition to what can be a solo game Okay, so getting into the first blood, we've got, and I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Here, what we'll do is we'll put um, put this over like this. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. We're going to put it right here for now. And we can get into what we have here in uh, first blood. You've got a mission book, again, featuring that same artwork from the movie there and on the front of the cover. And then this is a full-scale book that we have. It's going to list out, it's a good sized book, it's well spaced, it's got, um, and I'll just kind of hold it like this, it's got examples, it's got sort of that sapia tone so it's easy on the eyes to read. There's also some cool um, little pictures and different, different artwork throughout it as well, and right from the movie, this is cool. So they didn't have this on any of the prototype stuff. You can see here we've got pictures directly and scenes from, uh, from the movie that's right here in the book. That, that actually is 
pretty cool. It's pretty well done. Um, this is awesome. So this is going to lay out just sort of the different scenarios that are going to be there. Oh, man, they've even got some full page artwork there that's um, on some of the... This is really cool. This is really well done. And it's it's sort of like you're going through those original movies again uh, and playing. Very cool. Okay, so that is the that's the mission book. Okay, and then the next thing we've got is the rule book for uh, First Blood. I assume this does not have all the rules. This is probably just, yeah, playing the campaign. So if you want to play through the campaign solo experience, uh, it's going to have the mission, the hero setup, the game round, um, what is specific around this particular uh, setup of the campaign, and that's all you're going to find in here. Okay, so that's just for the uh, First Blood campaign. This, oh, this is your uh, hero card here, uh, John J. Rambo. This is his uh, his actual hero card, and then it's got cool artwork on the back of it there. All right. And we are going to take a look at the quality of some of these components as well. And really, that's all you're going to find outside of a few other little things in here that's going to be in this box. Maybe they just use the same style or size of box to have it be one nice package versus a larger box and then a smaller box. Uh, but you definitely have enough room to store anything you have Rambo between the two of these boxes here because you do have two full-size boxes. Now, when we look at the character cards, these are very similar. You know, they're not a thick cardboard by any means. They are a, uh, a paper card, um, which, is, which is fine. A thick paper card, it is, you know, kind of that satin type uh, coated card. So, you know, that, that's fine. You know, maybe some people want the thicker cardboard, um, sort of those cardboard, you know, almost like the chit thickness. Um, these are not that way. I don't see it as being a problem though, because I remember, you know, as you play, this is this is obviously right in front of you, and you're just putting little tokens on and off the card. There's really no reason to go with the thicker uh, cardboard for something like this. This is a really cool item, which is the round uh, tracker. There, you get the big knife that you got, kind of similar to what I had there in the the beginning of the video. So that's super cool. That's really cool, actually. Um, I don't think I've seen anything like that in a game yet. So, well done there. And then we've got our chits. We're going to pop one of those out. Here's all the different chits that you're going to need uh, there for the First Blood campaign. So they're right there. And the chit quality is your standard uh, your standard chit quality. Um, it's just your medium standard chit quality. It's, it's not the super light stuff, and it's not the super thick stuff. It's just your medium standard chit quality, um, which is what you would want for a board game. Sometimes when those chits get too thick... I think what happens is sometimes the uh, the manufacturers think, ah, oh, you know, it's better quality. Not necessarily. Those chits get really thick. They actually start to fray apart. They can warp. Um, they're just bulky in your hand. So good good choice on just the standard the standard chit uh, size there or thickness. There is a few extra baggies that are included. One, two, three. I can't wait to take a look at these miniatures. And Bear's going to hit these miniatures with the miniature cam here. We are going to take a look at the quality of the cards. There's one deck of cards, and that's all that's in the box. Okay, so we're going to look through here. Cards look phenomenal. Um, it's interesting. Some of them follow a direct, like, movie screen shot from the movie, and it's all just directly from the movie. I mean, this isn't, like, artwork that's made up. Um, they're straight movie shot scenes, which makes this incredibly cool. So we will get up close on all these. I'm going to put some of these right out here. And Bear will hit those with the overhead cam. It is interesting. On this one here, it is a straight movie scene, but it looks like it was done sort of with the paint style. So that's interesting. I didn't see another one that looked like that. That's the only one I saw that kind of looked like that. And all the other ones were just straight right out of the movies. So cool. So I'll put some of those cards out there. You can see those on the miniature cam up close. Really, really well done. I'm gonna keep this little I'm gonna keep this little bag because those cards can go back in there. Let's just make sure. Yep, there is nothing else in the box. Uh, and that's all we got, okay? All right, now let's get into the miniatures. We will dump these out. In this expansion, you get one, two, three, four, five miniatures. I'm going to grab the Rambo, and I'm going to grab um, the, I think this is the um, uh, one of the deputies, if not the sheriff. It's one of them, so... I'm going to grab that. So you can see they are smaller style miniatures. Um, 
I wonder if it says the millimeter on the box, but I mean, they're definitely looking like the smaller, um, the smaller miniature millimeter miniatures. I don't see it anywhere. If I can find it in the, um, let me grab, uh, <clears throat> so here's a standard, here's a standard D and D size miniature. So they're about the same. They're about the same size. So you can see there just in comparison, uh, they're about the same size. The only reason why I call that out is we have seen in, in board games lately a little bit of bigger miniatures, and these are these are the smaller. I would, I would want to say they're probably the standard 28 millimeter um, size, uh, but we have been seeing a lot of 32 millimeter and 36 millimeter and, and larger board game miniatures. So just something to understand: these are the smaller ones, um, and I'm I'm actually perfectly fine with that. I actually prefer in the board games the the smaller sized miniatures. They can be a little harder to paint, mind you, but um, I think it just looks better on the board and then you can have larger, you know, let's say if your game included any type of like terrain pieces, I think it just scales better and you can have that the larger terrain pieces that scale better with the miniatures. So just my preference. I think they did a good job here on the miniatures. There is different style bases that are on these as well, which is nice. So like this one here has just got a totally flat plastic base where something like this, his shotgun, and this is the this is the scene the guy's got like that that billy stick he's about ready to beat him down with. So this is um this is a scene where he's got a, his shotgun is actually molded into the base of the miniature there, which is cool. So they're not all just the standard, you know, flat plastic base miniature. Where this one here with Rambo has a completely sculpted rock uh, base on on the uh, miniature base there. It's all cut in and sculpted, which I which I know the way that this is the way that this is cut and sculpted would look fantastic once it gets a basing and a wash on it. So. You know, I'm probably definitely going to be painting these miniatures. It's just, I mean, you have to. This is Rambo. Hey, Rambo in this one is in an iconic pose, sort of holding his hand out, and he's got he's got his big he's got his big knife in the back, about ready to probably chuck and just throw that or go into a big slice. He's got his he's got kind of his bandana on. Um, it's 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 it is somewhat of a. You know, he's got his shirt on. He's got kind of the cloak, the ripped kind of shirt on with the, t the rope kind of tie around it. It's it's somewhat of a basic, I don't know this will sound bad, but it's somewhat of a basic sculpt, but it's got a lot of good uh, dynamic posing to it. And it is just, it feels like it's from that First Blood Rambo movie. So, you know, I just, I think that, I think that it's done really, uh, it's done really well. This looks really cool. Okay, so you can see all of those. Or you did see those on the miniature cam. You have a baggie there, um, and then I'll leave this. I'll leave this in the box. So we will go ahead and close this one up. Um, and it actually says right there. Uh, again, this is the first time I'm opening it as well. A solo story board game of action and adventure. You become Rambo in First Blood for one player. So this is all about the solo campaign of First Blood. I'm gonna put this right down here with Bear as well. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to get into the main board game of Rambo, a co-op board game of action, adventure, and war in Rambo First Blood Part 2 and Rambo 3 for one to four players. So if you did the Kickstarter and you got the... I don't remember if the First Blood was a Kickstarter exclusive or if that's something you can still come about. Um, I don't want to say one way or the other because I can't remember, but... Um, if you really wanted the whole trilogy, that's the way you needed to do it. That way you get the sort of the, the, the first player prequel like campaign of, of Rambo. And that's kind of a cool, cool way to get into it because somebody can get it and then you can play solo through and then bring all your friends and family into kind of Rambo two and Rambo three, uh, with the cooperative style because you've already played through the prequel, uh, solo. So that's actually a really good design as well. I'm going to put that here because it's just got such awesome artwork. Okay, right off the top here, it says, Attention, soldier, read me first. Before the first time playing Rambo, the board game, follow these steps. So this is going to be kind of a set out of organized card decks, organized punch boards, miniatures, storage. Uh, and then there's a thing here from everything at Epic. So th this is nice. It's a nice little sheet here that just sort of kind of steps you through the setup of 
what you're going to want to do when you start the game. We then have all of the character boards here, uh, and those are going to be the exact same as what we saw here, the, the paper. Um, we will get these open. Actually, I think it's oh, perfect. Sometimes these can be hard to open. All right, perfect. So that comes right open. I'll throw that down here, and we can throw a few of these out. You can see the awesome, oh, look at that one. Oh, that one is so cool. That's just the classic Rambo shot right there. That is so sweet. And then you can see kind of where the artwork is from. Rambo 3. Um, and then on the back side's the same. You're going to have all of their abilities and what they're going to what they're going to need. And it does look like they're all going sort of that artistic style. It's shots from the movie, but then it's sort of done with a um, uh, kind of a watercolor. That, you know, you can put that filter on there. This is from Rambo 2. Rambo 2. Rambo 3, the bazooka guy. Um, here's another. So here's a Rambo. Here's the Rambo promo card. So this is going to have its own miniature as well as some different abilities. Um, it should be different abilities. Yes, they're different abilities on this. Um, this is the standard one. And then this is the promo card. You're not expendable. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. All right, so here is yet another Rambo. So you got a few different Rambo options. This is from Rambo 3. And then, uh, wow, the Rambo promo cards are coming out hot. Another Rambo promo. This one I was excited about because this one comes with his, um, uh, what do you call that? It's his bow and arrow, but it's his, his rocket-tipped, his explosive-tipped arrow. Oh, this one is so cool. Love that one. Uh, we got the Colonel here. The iconic. Um, this one's so cool too. Rambo three. Ah, oh, you know what? This makes me want to go back and watch. It makes me want to go back and watch all the movies. So, like to go through and watch all the movies, especially Rambo two and Rambo three. I mean, they're all good, but um, it really makes me want to go back. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do that. I've got the itch now. Rambo the board game, the mission book. This is gonna be very similar to what we saw, and the other one's gonna have all of the missions. And you can see there is. There's quite a bit in this book. It's it's pretty good size. There is a lot of there's a lot of gameplay here, and it's the same it's the same thing all through the the mission book. When it talks about the mission, it actually has artwork that's right out of the movie, and that's what's going to be so cool is being able to go back, watch the movies, and then play the board game of the mission. Ah, oh, so cool. Here's the core rule book. It's going to go. Oh, there's choppers in here too. It's going to go through all of the rules. And the and the setup, um, it is pretty straightforward. I remember from the prototype, the gameplay was was pretty straightforward, uh, and I liked the way that it actually worked. This is more of a stealth based game. That's what makes this game cool. We'll get into that when we get into the actual gameplay of this. Is that you really can decide play style how what you do when you go through. Do you want to just go in and and run and gun right? Or do you want to go in and be more of a rogue-style stealth mission? Most of them are... I remember from the prototype, it was really designed from more of the perspective of trying to be stealthy and sort of moving around through the jungle and the different huts and the environment, using the environment to your advantage to kind of stealth-style take out the enemy and then maybe all-out run and gun when you got down to a few left or maybe the boss. So we'll have to see how the gameplay um, plays out now and, and, and ensure that that... That choice is still there for the player, where your uh, game style can kind of come through, or how you want to be able to achieve uh, victory within each one of those missions. I'll go ahead and open this. This is going to be the core. I think this is all of them. There might be more down in there. But this is going to be the core board, the tiles that you're going to use when you play the game. Okay. These are, again, that kind of that medium thickness. And I would say they look pretty, they're pretty straight. I'm not seeing any warpage. You shouldn't right out of the pack like that. But again, we'll check that when we do our gameplay video because that would be a month or so down the road. And these will sit out for a little bit. So we'll see if we get any warpage and, and what these end up turning out for us. Um, boards look good. I mean, the artwork is very tight on, on all the grass area. You can see the rocks. You can see it really does have a very cool jungle-esque type feel. 
So that turned out really well, and they didn't skimp on that. I'm really glad they didn't skimp on the artwork and how rich and lush those jungle environments look on the board versus, you know, doing something just more like sort of pastel painted or or not as detailed. They are extremely detailed, almost photogenic detailed, which is really cool. And then on the other side, you got kind of the rocky desert type um, look as well. Again, I'll, I'll put a few of these out. Uh, miniature cam will uh, will get up on will get up on all of this. Okay, put those out there. Um, so we got a bunch of different environments. You got some houses and some huts on some of them. You got kind of some rice fields it looks like in there with some watery environments. You've got a wa- like a river environment. Oh, so cool, so cool, so cool. Uh, we got a boat, a boat. Okay, and then we got all oh we got tanks. And stuff on the other side for when he's in the uh, when he's in sort of the the desert type environment. Oh man, so awesome. Okay, and here we've got the chits, and we do have. Um, so this looks like we got all the chits. I'm not going to open this one again. You got the giant knife, sort of. Uh, whoever's the I think it's whoever's the active player maybe gets this. Got a giant bullet, and you've got all of the chits, which that's going to be the same as what we would have seen with the expansion. Um, this is just a piece of cardboard in there. I'm not sure. Oh, it looks like it was just used for packaging. Okay, so we'll pull that out. Um, here's all the miniatures. We'll look through some of those. You've got an extra thing of baggies for all the chits. And then you have a number of decks of cards. One, two, three, four, Five, those are all the different types of decks and cards you need. I'm not going to open those since we kind of already got into these cards. We saw the quality, what those look like. We'll see these when we go through the gameplay. And then we've got the player reference uh, cards, which I think they did a nice job with these. These are definitely different than what I remember from the prototype. So I've got another piece of uh, packaging cardboard that's in there. It looks like they, they kind of chopped up a couple pieces of cardboard just to keep everything sort of uh, protected in there. Uh, which is good. You can just throw that away once you're done with it. So um, these look really good. Player references. We've got the round phases that's all on the front. And in the back, we've got all of the different uh, icons you're going to see on your character uh, player board there, as well as the different alert statuses, which is another mechanic I love of this game, how there's different uh, levels of alert statuses when you're kind of stealthing around the jungle. I like how they've done that reference card. This is something I want to see in every game. I'm just every game publisher out there. Put the reference card in that's got the icons of the game, that's got the phases of the game. doesn't matter how simple and straightforward it is. It just keeps players from having to ask over and over again, and it allows you as a player to be able to kind of prep for your turn and then just go through your turn after after it's explained. So just this right here, I have seen quite a few games uh, recently that, that they just they just skimp on the player reference cards, and I, and I just don't, I don't understand why. It's not that much more to put in the game. It's a simple card. Um, and and it, and it adds a lot of value for the players. Okay, and that's everything that is in the box. So I think I would have to say that everything Epic, so far from what I've seen from a component perspective, has really nailed this from an IP uh, side of the house. Um, I think we'll, we're, we're going to put the gameplay to test, but I think they've kind of nailed it from an IP side these are just all in one baggie so if you do want to paint these and put them back in your box this is another reason why i think it's good they they you know put the boxes are bigger than what needs to go back in the boxes so if you really wanted to you could put everything from the game in your rambo the board game you could paint all of your miniatures you could put some foam in your first blood case and then store all your miniatures protected in foam, a uh, little pluck foam, in your first blood. Uh, or vice versa, or, or you know, you can put some in one and some in another one, just the miniatures for one. There's enough room in these boxes to get, to get stuff, you know, back in and even have the miniatures protected. Now, I wanted to take a look at this. Now, this is one thing I was afraid of that was going to happen with all these miniatures just kind of put in a bag like this, like all the choppers, all the... You know, standard miniatures. Everything is just put back in a bag. You can see there is some bendage on on the on the chopper, um, not the wings, but the chopper blades here. This is something that is easily fl fixable. 
uh, especially with this kind of plastic. So you can just heat that up with a hair dryer, or a little hot water, cold water, and you can fix that up and then have those painted. I've already almost totally fixed this just by a little bendage of the of the plastic because it wasn't it wasn't that bad. You know, it's all up to your like you know how how perfect do you want it? I I kind of like these things to be um, spot you know look spot on. So you can see there the chopper. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be so cool. So we got that. Uh, I'm looking for some of the unique. Um, here's the bazooka guy, right? We got him. He got his little bazooka. I will say his bazooka is pretty pretty thin through this right here, so you might want to be a little careful with that. I mean, it's not gonna rip off or break off or anything, but it is a little thin. Uh, here's an awesome. Here's an awesome <laughs> sculpt there for Rambo, kind of just holding his giant gun. Um, where's the one? Here's another one. This one was so awesome. I love this one. Where he's kind of standing with his foot on the rocks, has knife, and he's holding that giant, like, what appears to be a 50 cal that he's just literally one arm holding. And then all the bullets kind of strung down the side there. That's so cool. There's a little bendage on that gun. I'm going to fix all these, make sure that they are absolutely perfect. And where's the one that I'm really looking for? Here's another style chopper. This is more of kind of your med bay mash style uh style chopper again it's just th these blades are having a real problem on the um on the on the blades and and it's really cool because it's even sculpted where little 50 cal guns i think that's a 50 cal is coming out of either side i'm gonna get this up front for that for a close-up it's coming out either sides of of the chopper there that's really well done and frankly i have not seen I mean, that's definitely a separate piece glued in there, but I haven't seen a, a sculpt like that. Normally, that is really cool. This chopper is very well done. Let's see here. Um, here's another awesome Rambo. Where is the one where he's got his... Here's in the ghillie suit. Where is... Where is it where he is standing? There it is. That's the one I'm looking for where he's standing on the rock with his explosive tip arrow. That one is cool. You know, I like the I like the style that they went with the green plastic. I may not paint the actual enemies. I may just leave them sort of army style green, but I am 100% painting my uh my Rambo characters. I don't know. That's you'd think you'd need to paint them all, but I do kind of like the fact if they would have went with gray um or or like a uh, you know more of a tannish colored plastic i probably would have painted them all um but since they're green i probably will just leave them like this i don't know i'll have to think about that maybe i put maybe i put a little bit of a green wash that's what i'll do i'll put a little bit of a, i'll just leave them like this i'll put a little bit of a green colored wash on there to get in all those cracks and bring out the detail and then i'll just flat mat uh, seal them. That's how I'll do all the the general enemies, and then all the main characters. I think I'll paint. Okay. Um, that way everything will look really good, and um, yeah, that'll work. Everything will look really good. I don't think there's any other. There's definitely more main characters, and here's another main character. Uh, but most of these are all. There's more main characters in here. I just wanted to make sure I got all of the Rambo's out. I believe I've got all of the Rambo's out of here okay so you can see all those miniatures on the miniature cam and just how cool those are everything epic really well done again team this has just been the unboxing of rambo the board game with the first blood solo campaign that was added on through the kickstarter we are going to be doing another video it will be probably a month or two out into the future which will be the gameplay we're going to go through how the game works how the final production game got executed and we are going to play the game i don't know that we'll play through an entire uh, mission i'll try to pick one where to kind of fit into a video of the shorter missions maybe one of the first ones and we will try to play through all of that so you get a feel for all the mechanics and the gameplay and then what i might do is go into if there's anything that's missing i'll find a scenario that has some of the deeper stuff uh, and we'll just talk through the mechanics and how that would work with gameplay Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. I'm excited about this one. I'm going to go watch some Rambo movies. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them crits. This has been the Maguire Review, and we'll see you next time!